Next, from Africa, we go to India. This lady, whose name means the start of summer, has 5,000 friends on Facebook. I couldn't even befriend her. So I'm glad she came through to South Africa. And please welcome her to stage, Meena Kandasamy. The first poem that I'm going to read is dedicated to the men of Durban because uh, wherever I went, whether to buy a SIM card or to get myself an adapter, the men were always making passes at me. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Lines addressed to a warrior. Come, colonize me. Creep into the hollows of my landscape my eyes click clock, no more the drawing of the gates. Set up your home, your office, the writing desk, and the trading post. Ignore the sand brown of my skin. A willing blind, I'll never know black from white. Take me and talk of your finer finish, stunned I yield, so script your stories here. Invade this inner space. Adjust the pace and pulse of your marching armies and house your machine guns, its manuals. Populate me with anthems, the songs of wrath and those of war. Draft words that echo of gunfire to accompany my lone dance of submission. Capture every territory. Fill up all my blank skin to resound with the strike of scimitars, the sadness of success. Have all your battles lost or won, chronicled across my line of town. Oh, and uh, the second poem is uh, dedicated to the women of Durban and of Poetry Africa. I seriously had doubts about my own orientation after seeing so many hot women. Okay. Okay. Excerpts from a study guide. Teach him not to seek where he has been taught to find. Lead him to the land of silences. Ignore his words of praise where all the perfidy lies. Because the climax of a dream is its return to reality, let him cling to your laughter, to your eyes that shine of light. Lead him to count the moles on your skin, but force him to begin with a beauty spot above your lips. <laughs> Talk to him of that summer of chicken pox that left you almost unscathed, but show him the unbeautiful gash with metal seared eight year skin. Tell him the history of your Rapunzel hair that once tickled your shin, but and also of a cruel world that sapped you so your hair cannot reach down to cover your shame. Press his ears against your skin and hear him announce, the dance is in the bones, the dance is in the blood. He shall chart and plot and map, but shrewd girl, bring him up to worship you. I love, I love him to memorize all of you so that someday he shall ravish you, screaming fiery love words in your mother tongue. He would have learned your lesson by then. <laughs> Storming in teacups. A cup of tea is not a cup of tea when you make it a twilight just for him. Call it a love potion, liquid dreams, scented desire, wishes boiled to a blend. Three cardamom pods, the dried Darjeeling leaves, milk and pearl white cream simmering to a syrup to be filtered. As you sweat in its vapors and imagine how the tea tastes against his lips, his teeth, his tongue and the pale pink insides of his throat. As you stir in the sugar and test a spoonful to see if it stings and stoots and stimulates the way you intended. As you pour it into his cup with eyes mirroring supernovas and study the desirable brown of the tea, an entire shade that fits exactly between the desert sand of your skin and the date palm of his, 
almost the color of your possible child. Thank you. Um, whispered intimacies. And I got your words today. I will have them painted tonight. Try to choose or take them all. Glitter on innocent raspberry lips that plead for touch, for closer communion, composition in coffee cream, blending with bitter chocolate worn on business days, ravenous red for fury animals in us, tamed by love in dying languages, colorless words invisible but everywhere, our love reserved for needy nights, love. Remember the rain and our fading words on lonely nights, drenching, drizzling, straying to a steady chatter or studied silence. Remember our whispered intimacies which still linger on lips. Remember that some words which once beheld promise now hold our bodies in motion. I think with this uh, poem, my love poems come to an end, then I go to the angry poems, for which... <laughs> and uh, sadly, I'm more famous for my angry poems than for the love poems. <laughs> he replaces poetry. Two months into love, and today I turn into ore, hunting for words, tearing them out from soiled sheets of mind, or pinching them from the world like removing jade green flecks from tiger's eyes and poetry refuses entry into my mirrored life that's bequeathed to him. I try the mad woman's antics. I have pulled my hair and bruised my thin wrists and bit the insides of my cheeks till they have bled a warm red soreness, and I have starved in arrogance to call the words home to me and thrown up to clear me of him, but he, strong, dark man, refuses to budge, give way, or take leave. My nights of savage tears have gone in search of needy shores, deserting me with the devil of a lover who sleeps half a dozen streams apart. And so have the words that once made me the sad, lone woman I was and pretended to be. I nod like a doll in breeze and reply in clawing tones, this is happiness. <laughs> I know I do not indulge in lies or delusion, but this is happiness <laughs> and Happiness is a hollow world for fools to inhabit where all the dreams eventually die by coming to life. Love has smothered me to a gay inertia and I long for a little hurt and pain that let me scream and I wait for offending words to roam me into worlds where I shall cry wildly for whole nights like the lament of lonely old and graying seas. Then sadness shall come back to me with its dancing fairy lights and nail me to wailing crosses. Poetry in the end shall replace all of him. Uh, there are so many poems about uh, grandmothers, so I think I should do this poem. Because I come from a family where my grandmothers, both of them would not understand a single word of what I was reading here. So this is dedicated to them. Their daughters. Paracetamol legends I know for rising fevers as pain relievers of my people. Fathers, fathers, mothers, mother, dark, lush hair caressing your ankles, sometimes sweeping earth, deep honey skin, amber eyes. Not beauty alone, they say. She married a man who murdered 13 men, and on one lonely summer afternoon, her rice white teeth tore through layers of khaki and golden white skin to spill the bloodied guts of a British soldier who tried to colonize her. Of my land, 
Uniform blue open skies, mad artist palettes of green lands and lily filled lakes that mirror all. Not peace and tranquil alone, he shudders, a young wife near my father's home with a drunken husband who never changed. She bore his daily beatings until on one stormy night, in fury, she killed him by stomping his seat back. We, their daughters, we, the daughters of their soil, we, Mostly right. Um, now I'm going to test a few poems on you because these are part of my new collection called Miss Militancy. <laughs> Celestial celebrities, because they had established a reputation of being wild and unrestrained and indiscriminate when it came to men, because they never bothered who left sediments inside them, because they looked forward to going down whenever an opportunity presented itself, because they went dry when it started getting muggy and unpleasant, because they froze to frigidity in their beds when they were in the unlucky lands of those who had fallen out of favor, because they were rapid in youth, because they mellowed and became maternal when they got older, because they followed the jagged, moody course they chose for themselves, because they loved erasure and erosion, because they threw tantrums and triggered wars, because they lacked secrets and loved catfights, because they held the magic keys to the corridor of power, because they were fond of running off and running away. The rivers in my land bear the name of fallen women exiled from heaven when they were found too hot to handle. Scrutiny, foreign affair. Trust any man who is allergic to children, carries a civil war in his eyes, travels a lot, and speaks up when you're subjected to society's customary stone throwing. This hero has a history of scandals. He keeps secrets like slave girls. Trust this man to never let you down or stand you up, even if it involves rising from the dead. Amen. For marriage, trust a man only after you have dunked his head in buckets of freezing water. Trust all the truth spilling out of him when you have slipped like soap on skin, rusty pins under his toenails. Eyes wide open, trust him as you take him on an electric dance that makes his penis sing. Test him to trust him, detest him to trust him. Trust a man through faith in all forms of torture, which is how men trust one another.